Uh, so here's an update in the saga of the storage units. <laughs> I decided to go ahead and rent a third storage unit, which I know is like, what? What are you doing? So my five by five, number one, is actually not quite enough space. I need a little bit more space. Not a lot, but a little bit more space because it's kind of piled up because the, it, the middle of it has got stuff in it. So it means not only can I not fit anything else because I want a few things out of my 10 by 10 storage, but also it's not usable because it's so stuff full. I don't need a 10 by 10, but I do need a bit more than the five by five. The second problem with it is that it only has access during office hours, which are 8.30 to 5.30. And that's only if they're actually there from 8.30 to 5.30 because sometimes I get there at 8.35 and it's the gate's still not open. I would actually think it was automatic. I actually thought it was automatic, but it's not. So it's like, when can I actually have access? You know, it's never, I never know for sure, which is a problem because I use this for like kind of as a closet, you know, so I need to get in there on a regular basis. The third issue is the part of town that the five by five in is by my old apartment. And I actually am spending less and less and less time there. I actually spend a lot of my time near my significant other's place. Not just because I'm seeing them, even though I definitely is because I'm seeing them, but also I kind of like that area better. It, there's a really great library right there where uh, it has covered parking because they have solar panels. And it's also a community center. So it's kind of like there's a lot of people there. So it's a very good place to spend time. And they have incredibly fast internet that you could access from the parking lot. It actually has the the thing for the internet in the parking lot. Like they actually have a thing there in the parking lot. So it can be in the parking lot even when the library isn't open on uncovered parking and access the internet and is super fast uploads where I upload all my videos. So faster upload them at my old apartment. And I mean like 20 times faster. <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating. So it just doesn't make sense to keep that place. Also, they raised my rate already. I haven't even been in there in a year and they already raised the rate. And I'm not talking about a promo rate that went away because I would expect that. I mean, they actually raised my rate. And I'm like, so my new place I just got is by that library and by my stick and others house. And I'm paying the same rate as my old rate, except instead of having a five by five, I'm gonna have a five by 10. It's also on the first floor. So I don't have to take an elevator because that was a big thing for me. I want indoor storage so I can have more climate control, but I did not want to have to deal with an elevator because that's what I have to do with my 10 by 10. My 10 by 10, the cool part about it is it has great access hours at 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. But I found that if I go there in the late evening, it is creepy as heck. I mean, storage places are always creepy, but I feel kind of unsafe. And they just the way the place is set up, like I have to take an elevator to get to my storage unit. It is incredibly inconvenient because of that. I've had times where the elevator wasn't working. So it's like if the elevator has, I've had multiple times over the years, the elevator didn't work. And I was like, what if I'm up there and the elevator doesn't work? There's stairs, but they're, you're not going to take your stuff on it. You know what I mean? And that, that one is also incredibly inconvenient because the auto pay doesn't work. So I have to manually log in there and pay it. And which is a big hassle when I'm traveling. Right? So bottom line is I needed a third unit at it. And I actually wanted a different place because I didn't want to deal with either of these two places. So I can move the, the very few things I want from the 10 by 10 into that unit and be able to start making progress on the 10 by 10 Swift storage. And then I can maybe next week, if not the week after, I will move everything from the five by five over to the five by 10 including the shelving unit and everything. I'll rent a U-Haul van to do that so I can do it all at once. And then consolidate down to one storage unit. And I think a five by 10 will be the right size. I don't want something super big and I wanna to try to have it be reasonably priced. Even at the, like I got a special deal rate. I don't know how long the special deal will last, but even the regular price rate is still a good rate. Also, I got the insurance. And they actually let you add on earthquake insurance, which I think is actually a very good idea in this part of the world. The other places didn't even have that as an option. And the reason I got the insurance is because it is just easier to get the insurance through them. So, and there's another storage unit around here, a, diff, a public storage. So it's, they, they tend to be more sketchy, I, it seems like. But they burned up, they burned to the ground because people have been storing fireworks in the storage unit. And so it, they exploded and burned that place to the ground. My plan is to today go by that storage unit and 
to get, I have to like get, show them. I did everything online, all the paperwork online, but I have to go in there and show them my ID and get my account like activated or whatever. And then hopefully I like the actual unit that I got. And they, you actually had to buy a key, uh, not a key. You had to buy a lock, which I'm fine with because then I don't have to find one that fits correctly. I, it'll probably be one of those circle locks. That's my update for the storage room stuff. So I'm temporarily in possession of three storage units, which is expensive, but it's a step to get to down to just one. I'm going to even have more expense because I'm going to have to pay junk haulers to haul away stuff in my 10 by 10. I, it, it, it is such a great lesson dealing with all this stuff that stuff is a burden and you want to get rid of things as you go. So you don't end up in this position where you have all this stuff that you either have to go through or you've died and your loved ones have to go through. You have to pay to store. I mean, it's just ridiculous. All right. So I'm going to go, go to the park, get some work done. I want to outline videos for my EPW channel that I'm going to film later this week. And I then will go to the storage place. See you later. Hey all, so got my new storage place. It's a five by 10. It's more like a room with a door. I like it so much better from that perspective. It doesn't have the weird metal walls. It doesn't have the roll up thing like a garage. It opens like a door. It make, means that the space is actually more usable because it's squared off and you don't have to leave space by the door for the rolling up of the metal thing. It just is a door that opens to the outside. That's much better. It does have dedicated parking spots, but by my building, there's only two spots. So that means on a day like today, like a Saturday, I might get there and there's no space. Right now, there's people who are, they did a lockout and they pulled up a U-Haul and I'm thinking they're taking all the stuff out of a place. So I'm probably not gonna go back there for a little while, but I am going to my storage room to load up my car with a bunch of things and then I'll take it there later. They're open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So it's a much broader amount of time for me to take stuff there. So that is also good too. They, ha they have like an app. So instead of having to push in the numbers, you can use your app, Bluetooth on your app to open up the gate, which actually will be better. I don't, I didn't have the app. I was logged into the app and stuff like that, but it does trigger my agoraphobia a bit because it's like lo this long and skinny driveway with buildings. And then you go into this long and skinny, you know, so I'll have to go over that, but that's true of almost all storage places. So I'm glad overall, the guy who works there is the nicest person, like the most friendly, high cut touch customer service person, like walked me all the way to my storage room and talked to me about, I mean, and was like, got the lock and all these things. I mean, so good. I liked him so much. And he had this like super positive energy. I mean, uh, amazing, amazing customer service. I, all the reviews on Google are just like over the top about this guy. And I was like, is that really true? They like paying those people. It's really true. This guy is over the top. The only bad review was someone who didn't like the fact that there were no lights inside your unit. Now, a lot of storage units do not have lights inside the unit but occasionally they do, which is nice. So this one doesn't have it. That's actually one thing I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna add little button lights. So, cause I already have them. They're not in here, they're my other storage, but. So I'm making progress on the storage situation. I have this stuff here to go to my new storage place. And this is about the month that could fit in my car cause I already have stuff in my car, right? And then you see here, there's now like holes, you know, where I can open organized and I know it doesn't look like much but I'm gonna move some more stuff another there's, there's at least one more load I can easily take in my car that I'll do today or tomorrow and then um then I'll come and decide what I'm gonna do next it, the reason I say it that way is because do I move the five by five stuff over or do I keep working on this I'm thinking I should move the five by stuff five over so I can cancel that one so here I am in a car with stuff I'm always in a car with stuff aren't I hopefully not always uh so this is the next load of stuff that I, I'm taking for my 10 by 10 to put my 5 by 10. It's stuff that I know I want to keep. It's like stuff for camping and things that I, I mean, I know I want to keep for now. 
I may end up realizing, oh, I'm never going to use any of these things. But right now I feel like I'm still figuring out what I need for camping and living in the car and all that. And there's also some things that if I had a vehicle that was just a tiny bit bigger or if I had a rooftop th storage thing or whatever, I would take those things. So I'm keeping that stuff for now. So anyway, yeah, this is a load to take to that place and I'm not going there right this second because these I think the parking spots are taken probably because they had a U-Haul and they were I think going to clean out a place there's a couple there's like three guys so I'm thinking they'd be able to do it fairly quickly but so I was going to give them some time to do that before I head over there it's not like I'm in a hurry since the place closes access at 8 p.m and it's like not even noon I got all day it'd be Good to take one more load after this, but I don't have to do that today. I could do that tomorrow or whatever. Since the access is 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day, including Sundays, I'm not as like worried about what day I do things. So the next thing is to look at moving out of the 5x5, moving the 5x5 stuff into the 5x10. Because I'm not going to put that much more in than this. I have one, let's see, I have one more box. I mean, it's it was just too big to fit in here. I mean, I've, no, I've one box of knitting stuff, one box that has the refrigerator in it. We'll see if I ever actually use that. And that's all. And then I have all my pictures and paintings and things. Not, I, I mean, I got rid of a lot of them, but the ones I'm keeping, that's all the stuff that I think I know for sure is going to go over there. I'm sure I'll find a few more things. I'm going to have some keepsakes and stuff, but everything else would have to be gone through before I decide to bring it over. So knowing that it's mostly what's in the five by five. And I do want to get moved out of there so I'm not paying for three freaking storage units at once. So I'm going to look at renting a U-Haul on Monday and seeing like what the fee is and is what's available and all that kind of stuff to do that on Monday. Obviously my storage place in the 5x5 right only has access from 8.30 to 5.30 so and it doesn't make sense to, it, you know, I'll pick up the U-Haul at maybe I'll actually just pick it up at 8.00. 8.30. Maybe I'll just pick it up at 8.30. That way I don't have to like sit in front of the place, you know. Let's see what, where's a good, what, you know, place has availability for a van because I want to rent a U-Haul van. I do not want to have a anything bigger than that. I want something that's going to be relatively easy for me to drive and park and all that jazz. And then hopefully move everything in one load, including the shelves. I mean, I don't want to actually have to take the shelves apart. I want to be able to move them as is. And then my rolling thing that has the drawers and the, the wheels keep coming off, I'm just gonna take the wheels off. I don't need the freaking wheels because now that I'm gonna go into the new place, I'll have room for all the shelving and for the drawers and everything like that. So that should be fun. I'm really planning and hoping to have a usable storage. I have an aisle in the middle and I have all, everything on shelves and hung up. If there's actually, since there is wood in the back, I could theoretically hang things up there. I, and obviously someone had used stuff as shelves. Like it actually is a much more usable space. The one thing I have to add is lights or at least bring lights in there. I have so many lights. I could easily just leave some in there and have lighting in there. So yeah, so I'm feeling very good about it. The place has very positive energy. I'm going to have enough room. So now it's really, I'm just going to be chilling here for a while and maybe working on outlaying some videos and then I'll go over there and see if there's a parking spot so I can actually drop the stuff off. So one aspect of living in a car that I, I did not fully appreciate, even though it is kind of obvious and I, I, I don't know, is weather and how dependent I am on weather and how chaotic and random weather is. The thing is that you can look at the predictions for what weather is going to be, but it doesn't mean it's weather is going to be like that. And so you can make a plan based on that, but you kind of have to plan for everything. You know, if it says, oh, it's going to be in the low 80s for the next week. Oh, okay. That's, that's fine. I can totally, you know, handle that without any problem at all. But then all of a sudden it's going to be 93. This is actually talking about next week. And it's like, you know, it's is hard to plan life because of weather. And this is just temperature. Eventually I'm going to be traveling to places where it rains and snows and all the things. So I have to be prepared for all those things. Hey all, so one thing that's weird I find about weekends is that the parks are super busy. This is a summer, it's August. It's probably the weekend before lots of school starts. Some schools started last week. And so, and it's also warm this weekend and 
even going to be warmer on tomorrow and the next day. So people want to go to the beach, they want to go to the park, they want to have their barbecue, etc. Those are all the the the, be the parks are the places that I hang out at, right? So it ends up that I don't have good places to go on kind of holiday weekends, summer weekends. Those are actually the most difficult times during the day for me to find a place to go. Now, I actually think the most difficult time will be big holidays when things are closed, like Christmas Day to some extent. There are, nowadays, is not as much stuff closed on those holidays. I remember one time I was on a road trip, I was trying to travel on Thanksgiving day and I couldn't find anywhere to get breakfast because like McDonald's and everything was closed. And uh, I had a, I eventually went to a gas station, but a lot of the gas stations were closed. And this is back a long time ago. This was in the 1990s. So when I say gas station was closed, I mean the pumps were closed because everything was closed back then because it was old fashioned time. So I've been working on my storage unit, right? Moving the storage units over to the new storage unit. My allergies are terrible. I'm constantly sneezing. My nose is constantly running. I'm constantly clearing my throat. <clears> throat> Case in point. It is ridiculous because I am being exposed to so much dust and stuff from these storage units. I am, I'm having troubles with this. Obviously having allergies is just something that's annoying. This isn't life or death, but man, this is annoying. We'll see how I am tonight. I was able to sleep fine and use my CPAP last night. So maybe it's not going to be a big deal, but this is an interesting little side effect from getting, cleaning out a storage room. Hey y'all. So I woke up not feeling good this morning, headache, and also my stomach is having problems. So I'm taking Tums. I'm using my cephaly device. Um, I actually didn't have coffee this morning because it didn't sound good for my stomach. You know, cause coffee is a little bit harsh on the stomach. I only have one eye partly open because when my cephaly is working, it's like very intense on my head and it's hard to open my eyes any more than like that. So I'm kind of just watching YouTube and resting as I use my device. Hopefully it will take the headache, migraine, whatever down a notch or two. I am a little bit worried about tomorrow because tomorrow I have a U-Haul that I'm renting to move from one storage place to the next. And I really hope I don't have a migraine tomorrow or the next day or any time this week because I'm very busy this week. Monday is moving with the U-Haul from one storage to another, emptying out to another storage. Tuesday, I have client calls. Wednesday, I don't have anything really slated yet. But then Thursday and Friday, I rented a hotel room to film for my other channel. So a lot of stuff this week. It's very going to be, well, it's not, it's lovely right now. It's perfect right now, but later today and then the next couple of days, it's going to be over 90. So it's going to be warm. It was fairly warm yesterday. Dealing with the heat is not a big deal, except when I have hot flashes and I've been having more and more and more hot flashes. So I may do a video on <laughs> living in a car with hot flashes. The problem, one of the problems is I haven't really figured out the best way to deal with it. I mean, I have a fan, obviously. I spray water on my face, things like that. I can, of course, always run the air conditioning in the car, but I find going into air conditioning places not there's like so many geese. Um, going into air conditioning place is not the best. So I don't know. Hey y'all. Yeah, this migraine is no good. So, um, say Sunday, I was going to do the U-Haul tomorrow on Monday, but I moved it to Wednesday because I just think even if I feel better tomorrow, just in case, I think it's better to give myself another day or two. And Tuesday, I'm busy with client calls. So I'm moving it to Wednesday and then hopefully that will work. Um, and then if I'm still having my rant on Tuesday, then I can cancel it and move it to the week after or whatever. It's not the end of the world. Um, if I feel okay tomorrow, then I'll move some stuff with my car or whatever. It's not just the migraine pain, even though it definitely is migraine pain. It's also that I... My stomach is really bothering me. I actually thought I was going to throw up last night, which is definitely not something I want to do in my bed. <sighs> I mean, this would suck in an apartment or a house. Being in a car does make it more challenging, primarily because I can't really make it um, as quiet and dark as I would want. 
Yeah, well, so I'm actually at someone's house. I've been resting on their couch and using an ice, um, ice pack on my forehead. It's actually not really the migraine pain that's the problem. The, I mean, that's a problem, yes, but it's actually that I've been having so much stomach problems. I haven't actually like thrown up, but almost. And just all day, all this gastro reflux stuff. And I mean, I haven't really eaten an actual meal. I had a latte <laughs> that they made me and I had a popsicle. So at least I'm getting some fluids in me. Um, and I think I needed some caffeine to be honest. And I had I think three crackers, three Ritz crackers. It's just the idea of food sounds terrible to me. So yeah, I'm just going to rest here today pretty much. And I do feel better than I did this morning. I think all the rest has helped. And their house is not air conditioned, but it has, there's a fan and it's just darker. And I know it doesn't probably look dark in this because the, the one light is like right here, but it's just darker. It's quiet. You know, it's so good for me right now. I think because I'm just been miserable today. I'm actually feeling not as bad right now. So I've, I've been, instead of like literally doing nothing and like dozing, I'm now, you know, watching YouTube videos and stuff, but I moved my, I'm so glad I moved the U-Haul uh, reservation from tomorrow until a couple of days later. And then I may end up moving again if I still don't feel good, but we'll see. It's of course also a heat wave. Now my theory is that the reason I've been having more migraines, I mean, I think there's a number of reasons. One is kind of stress of like, like not, not emotional, mental stress, but more like everything being new and different stress. But I think the bigger thing is environmental factors. My allergies has just been terrible. And then just dealing with all the environmental changes that happen every day. So from a health perspective, the next big thing I'm going to work on is allergy stuff. I have a whole bunch of allergy medicine and I'm going to try to find the right combination of them so I can reduce my allergies. And also I think maybe when I work on my storage, I need to wear a N95 mask. So I'm not getting in all that dust because I think the dust is a big problem too. All right. I'm going to go back to resting. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Hey so I still feel terrible today. Today's the next day. It's like a day of having a migraine. I still feel terrible. I, but the weird thing is, it's not just that I have a headache and my stomach bothering me. I also feel very uncomfortable in my body. It's strange. I'm feeling actually not terrible right this second because I'm like at the park. It's wonderfully overcast, thank the Lord. It's, I'm in my bed and I've just been like watching videos and stuff like that. So I feel very in a comforted kind of, you know, setting. I took shower and all that. So we'll see how today goes. I had client calls tomorrow morning that I, have, that I need to do at all humanly possible. And as of right now, I still have the U-Haul scheduled for the day after. If tomorrow I still have a migraine, then I will cancel the U-Haul or I'll reschedule it for the next week. I'm also thinking about rescheduling anyway because of the heat, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if, like, if I still have a migraine tomorrow, even if I don't have one on the day after, I'll be recovering from having one. But if it goes away sometime during the day today, such that I'm okay tomorrow, then I might still do it. I'd really like to be able to do it just to, like, be able to move on, you know, make progress on it. I think I've been thinking about what the causes is for having so many migraines and I'm thinking it's related to allergies. Um, first, just I need to get my allergy medicine from this storage. And I also think I'm just going to start a different protocol for my allergy medicine. It'll be a short version of that. And I think I need to wear an N95 mask when I'm in my storage unit. My, this, five by five, I don't think it hasn't really have dust because it's stuff has only been there for a short period of time. But my 10 by 10 is incredibly dusty, incredibly dusty. And I think that's really setting me off. So I think I'm not going to go to my 10 by 10 for a little bit. Uh, and then when I go back there, I'll get an N95 mask. I actually have N95 masks in here that are N95s that actually have the little vents. They're, they're not for COVID or whatever. They're for when there's pollution. And so I think that would be a easier thing for me to use. 
when I'm over dealing with the five by five. And then the problem is I get the boxes and I bring them into my car and then um, I have dust in my car. So I think, you know, that is a, seems like a better strategy to, to go through stuff, but I don't think it actually is. May, what I may need to do too is when I transport things, put down like a blanket that I, it's not my bed blanket, you know, like just something, I have a blanket that I use for camping and stuff. Like a throw blanket to go over my legs. Oh, a throw blanket to go over my legs when I'm sitting in a chair at a campground or at a, you know, a, it's something that can get dirty. So yeah, put that down, put any boxes or stuff on top of that when I transport it over to my five by 10. But most of the stuff I'm not gonna be transporting. Most of the stuff actually just needs to be gone through. So what I could do at my 10 by 10 is just park my car outside the gate and then go and then use my code to go in there and then I'm not blocking anybody and I can stay there longer periods of time and then just stay there and go through stuff actually there and only bring take stuff with me that I'm going to take over to the five by ten or that you know about when I'm going to take boxes to shredding or whatever instead of putting everything in the car trying to put everything in the car trying to go through it there I keep yawning I'm so tired I did not sleep well last night I did sleep some but it wasn't just the headache and stuff. It was actually because it was hot. And I keep having hot flashes. I'm having so much troubles. So much troubles. I'm having way more hot flashes than I... I'm not going to say that I never had this many. I have years ago. And now it's all come back. But if I have to have hot flashes instead of having a period, then that's fine with me. I trade that. All right, I'm going to go and do some more resting. Maybe I'll try to eat some crackers or something later. Hey y'all, so I thought I was recording a video and I hadn't pressed the record button. That tells you that I have a migraine. My pain level is much lower than it was. I took some Tylenol and it actually did help. But I still, and I don't feel as uncomfortable in my body, I think because I've been resting and being in my bed here at the park and I've been able to eat some crackers and I ate a little bit of applesauce. That's all I really had to eat so far. <sighs> we'll see how it goes today. We'll see if I am better by the end of the day or if I have to suffer through tomorrow too. I have three client calls, so I, which I need to do. I would only postpone them if I like literally can't do them at all. So I'm hoping I'll at least feel good enough to do them, if not feel better. And then we'll see tomorrow how I feel, whether or not I want to cancel the U-Haul for Wednesday, the day after. It all depends on how I sleep tonight and how I feel tomorrow. I don't want to do, if I have a migraine tomorrow, then I will cancel the U-Haul for when, the day after Wednesday. Because the day after a migraine, I still don't feel great. Um, and so moving stuff is a little beyond. I'm planning to eat some soup Again, I had a soup yesterday that my sniffing other brought me it's from Panera Bread. I may go back and get literally the exact same soup because I was able to eat it. The creamy chicken with the rice soup. I can eat that even if I don't feel that good. It's very comforting. You know, someone on my comments, we were going back and forth about um, canned food, you know, and I do have a little bit of canned food in here. There's a couple of issues. Number one, you have to heat it up. So you have to actually do have to do something. So, which, uh, you know, that's not terrible, but it is what it is. The other thing is that if you look at a can of chicken noodle soup, it ha doesn't have that much calories. Sometimes it's like 120 calories. And I'm like, that in a meal? What's that? Like that, I can barely eat food. I need it to be calorically dense. I don't want something low cal, you know, and there are some soups that will have more calories, but a lot of times there's things that will be hard to digest, like a chili or something. I really love chili. And I miss it. I do still have my slow cooker. I do have a tentative plan that in the winter I may get my slow cooker out and and because it doesn't use very much electricity and if I cook something on high I could get it done in four hours you know now one of the big things about me cooking bigger amounts of food like a chili is I need refrigeration so I have a refrigerator it is in my storage the reason I did not use it starting out is because I kind of tested it at home and it actually wasn't working correctly and I could not deal with it. It was just 
one too many things. I had too many things going on trying to get ready to move out and live in a car. So I couldn't deal with fixing it or troubleshooting it. It may have been that it wasn't pulling, like it may have not been the right settings on it because it has all these different settings. It may have been that it wasn't like having the right amount of electricity going to it from the battery. I actually don't know. It could also have been an actual problem with it. Like maybe it's broke. So someone actually left a mean comment that I hid from the channel, but I uh, say, you know, why are you using your refrigerator? Cause you're scared of it breaking. Well, cause the one I was using actually broke. <laughs> so this isn't like a theoretical problem. This is, I have a refrigerator and I was testing it in my apartment and it wasn't working right. So obviously I need to troubleshoot that before the warranty expires. And I actually don't even know what the warranty is, maybe a year. And, uh, I don't remember when I actually bought it either, but I didn't figure out if that works. And let's see if it fits in this spot. So I, I bought it for a different car configuration when I was going to put my bed in the back, like I was going to have my bed go through the pass through, which I didn't work. So I have less space inside of here. I would think that I would want the refrigerator in here because I would want the battery in here. So the battery can be charged by the car when I'm like on a long trip because my big battery can totally be charged by the car, but and that, and that works really well when I'm traveling place to place to place and I'm driving for, you know, six hours, totally charges that up. No, but I think it charges it in like about, well, it depends if I charge, it depends on how much it gets used. If I was doing a fridge all the time, I only have one solar panel, 120 watt solar panel. So that wouldn't be the best for charging my big battery. It works great for my small battery, but it would not work great for my big battery, which is what I would use for the fridge. I'm not getting more solar panels because I don't have anywhere to put them. That's a project for the next build. So I may go ahead and test out the fridge again while I'm still here in town and see if I can get it to work. It is good to know that I can eat just shelf stable food. And I'm very glad about that. But, you know, I would like to be able to cook larger quantities and have leftovers and then be able to just reheat leftovers. That would be really nice. And it would be a way for me to, I would be able to eat a lot, lot cheaper. One person actually left a comment that I actually thought was really interesting too, is what he does is he has a refrigerator that he has set to the freezer setting and then he puts bottles of of water in there, lets them freeze, and then uses that as the ice for a soft cooler to keep refrigerated things in. And then you just, when that's defrosted, you put it back in there and refreeze it. I, I think that's a really interesting idea, especially for like when it's not the summer. So like the summer, I don't, you, it would might take, take a lot of, battery power to keep the fridge at freezing. I don't know, but during, you know, when it's not 95 degrees outside, um, it wouldn't have to work as hard. And then that might be really great. I could use my soft soap cooler for, you know, the things I use it for now effectively, and then have a freezer that I could so I could keep all kinds of things, you know, leftovers and frozen vegetables. I mean, it would be really nice to have like frozen vegetables are so much cheaper and they're very good for you. I would really like that. So that I'm thinking that once I get the storage units consolidated, which is priority number one, as far as a project goes, then if I have time, my next project between now and when I leave and go on my next trip, in a month or so is seeing if I can get the fridge situation to work. But I might not have time before that trip because moving all the storage is a big freaking project and going through everything into my 10 and getting rid of stuff. So I'm not going to say that I will do that for sure, but maybe, maybe. I think I have five weeks, including this week before I for sure leave. I don't, I haven't decided exactly what day I'm going to leave. I have reservations at Yellowstone and at the North Rim. And so I know when I have to be in those places, but everywhere else, <coughs> everywhere else I don't, I is tentative plan. So I'll see. All right. I'm going to go get on the next thing. So if I'm going to be feeling bad, I actually like being at the park. There, especially when it's not, you know, horribly sunny or, or hot or whatever. There's little bug noises and birds and squirrels around in the trees and everything. Fresh air. Obviously, it's not helpful if I'm like, you know, if I was really, really horribly sick, but for not just feeling kind of mediumly not good. 
Um, it is a nice environment. I think about my old apartment and, you know, would I rather be in an apartment physically, like in the, when I'm not feeling well or whatever. Air conditioning would be lovely. That That is something I would love. I would love to have um, refrigeration and, you know, an easy way to heat things up. So, you know, when I would not feel well having, you know, frozen meals in the freezer that I could stick in the oven or something like there's things like that that would be that are much more convenient and easy to do when you live in a house or an apartment obviously having your, your own restroom you know. but I think it is better for my soul to be outside I think about you know someday having land and building a tiny house on it and I'm going to build something so we can actually do this that is very very using the outside you know obviously it's important to have buildings for your shelter and and everything but having a lot of outside living area and you know my thought was to have land and then first build a building first actually I was planning to first just build a shed start out with so I can store things, see if I like building things. I mean, just very basic. Actually, before I do a shed, I might even just build a little like picnic shelter, you know, that was just a top, like a metal, corrugated metal or something and four posts, just to make like a shelter from, you know, rain and from the sun. Might even put like one side on it to kind of give a shelter from wind. And depending on what the prevailing wind is, I'll have to look at that, but, and then have, a countertop to do to work on for doing other projects and then like a little picnic area like that would be really nice as a campsite you know like really that's what I'd be doing building a campsite then the next thing I'd be building was a shed and then building a tiny house and the idea is it'd be like a one room with a little bathroom tiny house and no loft because I have knee problems and so I'm thinking long term that a loft is a bad idea for me I went one floor. So very small, tiny house, complete with a, with a bathroom and a way to bathe and, you know, a kitchen and kitchenette little thing. And then assuming I like that and everything, then start building other buildings for other purposes. You know, have a little building that is a guest house, have a little building that is a work room or office or project room. You know, like the idea being, and then connect them all with covered walkways and then have it have build them in a way where I can end up with a protected inside area garden that I can make a little garden in now this is the middle of the desert so it wouldn't be super gardeny but I can have some raised beds you know and have a little bit of things in there but then have an area that's you know out of the wind because New Mexico has a bit of wind but I think that would be really neat, really nice. That's one of my little dreams and ideas. I've always had an idea of having a house that has a protected garden in the middle. I think that would be so lovely. You know, and then if you have a pet or pets, they get to be outside, but still protected, you know, and then we hang out there in, in the garden. I think that sounds very lovely. Anyway, it's getting close to when I might eat more, I downloaded the Panera app so I could actually order food and then just go in and pick it up and wouldn't have to like go through a big thing. I'm not going to place the order until I'm leaving here, which is why I haven't placed the order. And I haven't left here because it's actually still nice here. So I don't necessarily want to leave. I, mean, I could leave and come back here. It's very hard for me to psychologically do that. My significant other has offered for I could come and hang out on their couch again like I did yesterday. They're working though, they work from home. So that like weird behavior. Uh what to be in the way of them working, you know? I might end up doing that though. I've thought about when I was in the shower this morning, I was thinking that if I'm feeling not good in the evening, I might go and take a second shower at Planet Fitness to cool off. Because one of the things that happened last night that was a big problem was I was too overheated to go to bed. And so I just could not could not fall asleep it wasn't just the migraine pain and, and not feeling well it was that I kept having hot flush after hot flush today I'm not having as many this morning that could just be you know the fluctuation of things 
maybe the reason I'm also getting migraines is because I'm in a stage of perimenopause where my hormones are wackadoodle and changing a lot. That's how, that's what happened in the beginning of perimenopause for me. I had a, ton, a period of time where I was having tons of hot flashes and then I didn't have hardly any for a long time. My, my overall temperature changed. Like I recalibrated. I used to be the kind of person who was cold all the time and I was always wearing sweaters. Even when, like right now I'd be wearing a sweater, like a little, you know, cam or something, or a little tiny sweater, summer sweater. But now I'm always hot. I wear sandals like when it's cold. Always hot all the time. So, oh, the only time I wear covered shoes is because it's so dirty and dusty on the ground. Uh, you know, I wear it for foot protection, not because my feet are cold. My feet don't get cold now. At least not yet. We'll see. We'll see if in the depths of winter, my feet actually get cold. Oh my gosh, you guys. I was like, what is that noise? What is that noise? It is drizzling. It is drizzling. It's wet. I mean, it's the tiniest drizzle you could possibly imagine. I, I didn't even know what it, the noise was. I hear it on the car. Oh, my window's open. I don't, it doesn't, it's a drizzle. It really doesn't matter. Oh my gosh, I can't even believe it. I know some of you live places where it rains all the time and you just can't understand why I'm like this, but I'm just like, the first time I've been in the car, living in the car when had weather, as in rain, precipitation. So I was able to actually eat the Panera bread. I had a half sandwich and some soup. Panera bread is not cheap, but it actually is very flavorful. I need something that was tempting to get me to eat. So I had one meal today. Yay! I did not eat the bread because that would have been too many carbs. So I'll save that to have with dinner or something like that. If I can eat dinner. It's very hard to eat well and not expensively. You don't want to eat anything at all. Hey y'all, so little update. I, my migraine isn't gone, but it is much less of a big deal today. I have three client calls this morning, including one at 8 a.m. And when I put my time block starting at 8 a.m., I didn't factor in the fact that the park doesn't open until 8 a.m. So I can't do my 8 a.m. call in the park because I wouldn't have time to you know get go in and get to a parking space and everything in a millisecond so i am gonna have to change that and have my first call be at like 8 15. so today my first call is at 8 so i'm in the parking lot of cvs to do that call then i'll go over to the park and everything like that the other thing is i'm switching to tea i'm gonna i bought a six pack of unsweetened tea and so i'm switching to that for my in town coffee substitute because it's cheaper and easier yeah and more reliable so I, I tried so many different coffees you know i tried the concentrate cold brew and i tried just coffee that you just buy you know like and they were all either disgusting one i bought i had today i, I literally took one sip and i threw it out or and, and they would be overly sweet and have all this like over flavor in it and or they would just be mediocre and it's still expensive like almost as much as getting a coffee somewhere so I'm like that makes no sense so tea is fairly like easy and tea is also cheaper so that's what i'm thinking i might just stick with for a while is just having tea it, it is also easier to even make right and i like tea and i've had times in my life where i drank tea instead of coffee so that's not really that weird for me Maybe I'll save coffee for the winter or for times when I'm going to have something special. I'm going to a coffee shop. I don't know. But yeah, I actually like that. The iced tea was, is nice. This one is the pure leaf. I mean, there's lots of different kinds, but I wanted something that had nothing else besides tea. This is tea and then some citric acid, which I think is a preservative. It is used as a preservative. So as I said, today I have client calls. I rescheduled the U-Haul again and rescheduled it for next week, not just because of the migraine, even though it's a big part of it, because I do not, still don't feel 100% and I'm having a big physical day tomorrow probably isn't a good idea, but because also I'm recording video for my other channel on Thursday and Friday. So I need to record like, like a dozen videos over that 
20 hours I'll be in the hotel in the hotel room and so I need to have outlined all those videos and I've outlined like a third of them I thought I was going to be working on that on the days that I had a migraine so hopefully today this afternoon maybe I will outline more videos or even later this morning I'll outline more videos and then tomorrow I can have a chunk of time where I outline more videos my plan for the week that I put in my planner is like completely gone I also will have to go to my storage room and since I'm not going to be reorganized my storage room moving it and all that I'm going to have to pull out my filming equipment my camera and everything is actually pretty close to the front but I also have all my lighting equipment and stuff and I think it actually is also in the front but I'm not 100% sure I'm not going to worry about today because I'm not going to pull out today I'll pull it out on Thursday in the morning before I go to the hotel I can't check in the hotel until like what three I might try to check in a little earlier than that but so yet another day um as I've probably talked about before one of my videos my why I live in the car video took off and it's gotten a couple thousand views which means that you've gotten all these new people in which 95% of them are wonderful and then there's that not even 95 it's right 99% are wonderful and then there's that really small percentage that are just mean calling me names I mean just all that and it's interesting because on my other channel I rarely get that stuff just because of the kind of channel it is uh because I'm being an expert in that channel I guess where here it's like they like attacking people personally I mean it's amazing uh the how people can be but I just hide them from the channel so we don't have to see that and then they can scream into the void all they want but I do have to keep checking in with myself, especially when I had a migraine because my migraine, I'm kind of more fragile emotionally, you know, I had to check in with myself that, you know, this is not, I don't know, like I, to, to remember that 99% of the people are great, supportive. It's very, very tiny percentage of people who are mean and I'm not doing this for them. So the important thing is just to see what they're doing and hide it as soon as possible and if anything is you know really bad then reporting it but it is difficult though and it's also difficult to not edit myself not to censor myself now that i am getting me some mean comments and other videos are getting more views so it's real I, one of my things that i want to do with this channel is to present the kind of harsh reality that is both good and bad of this and because there's a lot of because there's people who are very critical and mean it makes it hard to do this kind of work so it's important to you know make sure I have a nice boundary there so that doesn't affect what I'm doing and still do this work in portraying the harsh reality of it both the bad stuff as well as the good stuff it is not 100% one thing or the other all right well I'm gonna do some work, get ready for my client calls, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. I'm literally in an empty parking lot, and this person was walking their dog and walked, put, stood right in front of my car. I was like, what are you doing? Why are you having your dog go to the bathroom, like, literally right in front of my car? There's, like, a hundred spots here with nobody here. I, I don't even understand. People are so odd. So I am doing a lot better today. I'm not 100%. Um, I did have to take some Tylenol, but comparatively speaking, I'm much more functional. Not, I'm going to make sure I'm very easy on myself so I don't relapse. So got three client calls done. Also got FaceTimed with my son, which is really nice. So we could touch base, but I hadn't talked to them on the phone or FaceTime since Friday. So it was like three, four days ago. I don't remember. And I also bought new shoes. So my current shoes that I wear like every day that I'm not hiking or something. Um, yeah, that has a problem. So I actually bought these exact shoes. These shoes are from, these shoes are like seven years old or something crazy like that. So, and I, I used to not wear them every day, but now I'm wearing them every day. So it was like the last for them. So I guess I get some new shoes. I ordered from the same brand from Zappos, these are the ones I ordered are also Clark's and I, the exact shoes aren't sold anymore as you might imagine, <laughs> they're not sold all these years later. So I ordered ones that are seem very comfortable, have very good reviews. 
And I really like, one of the things I really like about them is that they're adjustable. They have a, like a, um, what's that called? The hook and loop. I'm trying to use a brand name. Hook and loop and adjustableness. So that way I can deal with my feet when they swell up. I was able to get the wide shoe. So that's good. Because I'm a size nine. I'm still a size nine. I've been size nine my whole life. But I need to be wide now. Now in running shoes, I get like an 11. I don't understand shoes. You'd think it'd just be the same size. But these are sandals. I don't have socks on. I'm not running in them. I don't really use these for hiking. These are like, these are city shoes. Now, back in the day when I would live in a house or an apartment, very long time ago, such as two months, then I would probably keep wearing them for a while. But now that I live in a car, like I try to keep up appearances a little bit, a little bit better, a little bit better. Not doing a perfect job of that today. I didn't even like wear my jewelry. I since, since I had a migraine, I haven't really been on top of things, but doing a little bit better. So I'm going to go get some lunch. I have like, I haven't bought produce or any sort of, you know, lunch things at all. So I'm just going to not worry about that until I'm able to go through and throw out the stuff that is yucky and, and buy new things. And I'm not going to stress about that. Hopefully I will do that. Maybe tomorrow morning would be a good day to actually buy food and cook it that day. So today I'm not, not going to pressure myself in that. I actually have no idea what I'm going to do for lunch. Nothing sounds good. One of the problems with the migraine is it affects my taste buds. So it is very hard to figure out what sounds good. I got Panera two days in a row. So I don't want Panera like ever again, which is not true. I'll get it sometime, but now I'm just like sick of it. I don't know what I'm going to get. I mean, don't get me wrong, I could get something different at Panera, but uh, one of the reasons I went to Panera is because, you know, soup and breads are very comforting foods, which is true, and I can eat them. So I might go back there and just get something completely different. But, do I even want that? I mean, I could get, like, tomato soup with grilled cheese or something really comfort foody. I don't know. I don't know if I want to eat that in a car. <sighs> I'm still tired, but I actually slept last night. I mean, I woke up a number of times, but, like, Lately, I've been waking up a lot. I did not use my CPAP because my head hurt too much. I couldn't deal with it on my face. I mean, that's not a good idea, but like, I literally like was, I could not, I had a lot of tactile problems with this migraine where I felt very uncomfortable in my body and everything bothered me. So people think migraines are just about pain and they're not. Sometimes it's not even the worst part. It's about sensitivity to light, sensitivity to sound, sensitivity to smell, and also sensitivity to touch where it's like, I Physically, I'm uncomfortable with my skin. It's very hard to explain if you've never had that before. And I had a lot of that, a lot of that with this. So I'm also going to work on the some work stuff because I'm filming video on Thursday, Friday. I need to finish outlining all those videos. I also need to get out my allergy medicine, which is in my trunk. Because I need to, before I can go back into my storage rooms... <laughs> I need to get allergy medicine up to like a certain level and get all of it out and then figure out my new allergy medicine protocol is going to be. I'm also going to be wearing a mask, an N95, when I go into my storage rooms because I think that's one of the problems. And when my allergies are bad, then I get more migraines. Hey all, so migraines update for today. I've been back and forth really. I've had times today that I felt like right now I feel almost normal. And then, but an hour ago, I mean, I was just, I don't even know if it was an hour. It might have been 30 minutes ago. I mean, I was just, just like bracing against it. Uh, it's very back and forth. I'm really glad that I canceled the U-Haul for tomorrow. So I don't, I don't have to worry about that. And tomorrow is actually a big wide open day. I really want to get outline those videos that I plan to shoot on Thursday, Friday. But I could actually work on that Thursday morning, you know, worst case scenario. Uh, but I'm, I have a sense of relief that tomorrow I don't have, you know, an appointment or a call or something that I have to do at a specific time so I can do whatever I need to do. If I still feel bad tomorrow, which is possible, I have had migraines the last four days, then, you know, I'll just take it easy again. If I feel normal tomorrow, then I have a big backlog of things to do in the sense of like just shopping, 
for food and tidying up the car and like all this kind of stuff that I'm just not worrying about right now. I've been eating takeout because I cannot deal. Partially because it's hot and partially because, I mean, it's like in the 90s and partially because it is because of the migraine and not feeling well. I had Panera again this morning, but I used the app so I could pick things up. And then I got a nice salad, actually. I was it, It's this apple, sal, apple chicken, whatever, salad that I've had before. And it's so good. So good. And then I had McDonald's for dinner, <laughs> which I also got the app, which I had never done before. And so I got a Tempe's chicken nugget, which actually isn't a bad thing for me to get as a diabetic person, interestingly enough. It's actually not bad. I think the biggest problem with that is the barbecue sauce, which I did eat. I should look at the carb things on each of the sauces. Maybe I'll switch to a different kind of sauce. Maybe there's another sauce that's not sweet, but to be honest, I think everything there is pretty sweet. So, so I have been trying, kind of just trying to get through the rest of the day, watching shows and YouTube videos and stuff just to pass the time. It's one of the few things I can do when I have a migraine. That's a fairly bad migraine. I've also been having so many hot flashes. I ordered a cooling blanket. I'm gonna try that for sleeping and see if it helps for sleeping during the summer. Um, maybe not even have a sheet, maybe just use that. I'm worried about how hard it will be to launder if, if you're not allowed to put it in the dryer because then what the heck do I do with it? I might have to ask my significant other to hang it up somewhere. I don't even, I don't know how that will work. But hang it up in my storage actually. Now they have my new storage unit. I think I might actually have enough floor space where I could put up a drying rack and hang it up. One thing that, okay, this has just happened with my phone. My phone keeps getting overheated and I don't, I mean, don't be wrong. It's 90 degrees when it's in the thing right here on my dash, you know, like here on my dash, then it can be in the sun. So I think part of it is literally just the heat and the sun, but it gets overheated even when I'm not doing something. And it used to not get overheated, it's, I felt like. So I'm concerned about that. Losing my phone would be a problem. Both losing my phone and Wells. I mean, I, I've only had this phone like for not that long of a period of time. So I don't remember when I got it. Not that long ago though. I don't remember. All right. I'm just gonna keep trying to pass the time. Get through the day. Maybe sleep better tonight. Let's hope. I slept better last night than the night before. So it's a progression. And then see how Wednesday goes. And hopefully I can feel better before I record video because I can't get a refund on the, like I already am committed to this hotel room. Um, the cancellation I think is already passed or it probably passed like today at four or something like that. So I'm going the wrong way or the other. And I will charge all my electronics and do all those things. But, and also my business is gonna pay for it. Not, I mean, my business is myself, but I will use it do as a tax deduction because it is for recording video. So one thing I decided to do was to really focus on not getting overheated in the evening. So I go to bed in the most neutral amount of body temperature that I can. So for the last uh, hour and a half, almost two hours, I am just been hanging out in my tank top. I don't wear a bra, so like this is the only layer. And it's like, does it matter? I'm just in my car and like, you know, whatever. So I decided to do that because I decided to prioritize my temperature. I use my device for a full hour. I really today been back and forth with migraine stuff. You know, it's definitely not as bad as yesterday. Definitely not as bad as the day before that but it wasn't zero either. And there were times where the pain was actually like, one of the problems that happens for me with a migraine is as each day progresses, there's this soreness in my like brain or something from having multiple days of pain, such that that's, it, it makes the pain worse even though it's not as bad. But so it was, not as bad pain, but there were times where it would just be, oh, it would just feel so incredibly sore. I ate food at like four something, McDonald's actually, chicken nuggets, and that actually helped. Sometimes the act of chewing helps. I thought about getting gum, but then it actually made my jaw hurt. So I didn't do that anymore. But 
Yeah, I, I used my device for an hour, made sure that I had my fan right there, so I wasn't getting overheated if I had a hot flash. I'm getting like hot flashes every hour now. Like, I really hope this isn't just habits, <laughs> because that sucks. Anyway, I trade hot flashes though for not having periods, so that's fine. Well, that McDonald's is like all under construction. Um, the driveway or the parking lot. Anyway, off topic. So I actually am feeling physically pretty good right now um, in the sense that I'm not overheated and my head isn't too bad. You know, I used to say use my advice for a whole hour. It really seemed to do some good this time. So we'll see. We'll see how it will be going to bed. I did order that cooling blanket that's supposed to come tomorrow. I ordered new shoes that are supposed to come tomorrow. The cooling blanket ended up costing me like $10 because it was 35% off and then it was 50% off. I don't even know how they're making money. I guess it really is cheap. <laughs> but but the shoes were like $60 or something because they're half decent shoes. And they're actually leather is involved in these shoes. I'm hoping that I would like them. Most likely I will. They're brown. I haven't worn brown shoes in a long time. I've been wearing black and other colors, but like not like in the black gray family and not the brown family. But they were out of black in the shoes that I wanted. So I'm like, you know what? We're just going with brown. We're just going to see how that is. We're now someone who wears brown shoes. You know, hopefully I actually will like, not just like them, but hopefully they'll fit right. It's very hard for me to figure out what shoe size I am because my feet get swollen sometimes. And these are adjustable, so I'm hoping that will make up for it. Tomorrow, I have no plan. I have a hopes of things that I will do, including outlining videos, but I don't have any plan because I might feel better, I might not. It's day four. I have had migraines the last four days. Maybe I'm getting more migraines because my hormones are wackadoodle because after COVID, it like kicked me forward and menopause mess or something. I don't know. I would like to hopefully also we go back to doing my routines. I haven't been doing any of my routines. The only thing I've been doing is taking my meds at night. And what I forgot to tell y'all. So the hotel that I'm, see this is supposed to be anti-reflective lenses, but it is, you can totally see a reflection of myself. It is, okay. I, yeah, I don't know how to fix that. Okay. So yeah, anti-reflective. So anyway, I forgot to tell y'all that the hotel I'm staying at did this weird thing where they sent an email and I booked it through hotels.com. This hotel is not a chain, I don't think. I think it's just like one individual place. And they sent this email saying, you can upgrade, you know, for a certain amount of money. I'm like, that's interesting. I'll click on that and see what it said. They didn't say how much it would cost to upgrade. You could bid on how much you would pay and then they'll accept or reject it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It was like, tip, people who typically bid $30. I'm like, 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 what in the world is this? And the diff, the thing that I would have been upgrading for for $30 is actually just the nicer version of the room that I already have. You know what I mean? Like, I have a king-size bedroom, and it was like a deluxe king-size bread room that's just, I don't know what. You know what I mean? But this is not getting like an ocean view, okay? This is just on a road, you know, in suburbia. Yeah. So today's day four of this migraine. It has moved over to the other side, which is usually the last day, the last half day or day of any migraine that I have. So that's good. I mean, having a migraine for four days is not good. That's the, I haven't had a four day migraine in years. I'm really thinking this is a combination of allergy problems, dealing with all the all the dust in my storage rooms that I think that's part of it and I think the other part of it is hormonal I I'm thinking that when I had COVID a couple months ago it like kick-started perimenopause and menopause whatever for me and that's why I'm having all these hot flashes because my hormones are like doing their final like thing to go into menopause and that's why I'm having more migraines I had a lot of more migraines when I was at the beginning of perimenopause many, many years ago. And then it evened out when, and when my hormones were very even and I didn't have hot flashes anymore and I didn't have migraines that hardly ever, but now it's all back to worse. 
maybe this will be just something I have to get through and then, you know, get to the other side of. So, but the thing I can manage is the allergy stuff. I still haven't actually got my allergy pets out of the trunk. <laughs> that was on my list for yesterday, but it just did not happen because the migraine kept coming back over and over again. So right now the pain level, I would say is a two or three, but I have Tylenol in me. Um, it's, it, I have this soreness after I've had a migraine for multiple days. I, in a way, I'm glad I moved to the other side to at least give me a break on this side. The pain is not as bad as it was in the first two days. So I'll say that. Definitely not as bad. So yesterday I was able to get some things done. I got client calls done. I ordered shoes that are going to come today. I was able to get through my comments on YouTube and like all this kind of stuff. My new channel, this channel, gets as many comments in a day as my old channel that I still run. My old channel has 11,000 subs and this channel has a couple hundred subs it just shows you how different types of channels get radically different amounts of of comments and how the channels work and how they make money is just radically different um, i'm actually starting a third channel that's going to be about that about my experience having two youtube channels that are different genres and how it radically is a two different kinds of businesses and so i think it'll be very illustrative which means that I'll have a third YouTube business too. Probably an insane thing to do, but I'm thinking on that channel, I'll just do, I'll just start out doing, you know, two videos a month or something like that. I don't even know if I'll do it weekly in the beginning. But this channel is twice a week. My law channel is usually once a week. Occasionally I've done twice a week, but not very often. So today, the number one thing is outlining videos. I have some done already in my notebook here, and I have a lot more to do. So, I mean, I, I'm not quite sure. I have one, two, three, I have like four or five videos. I have four or five that are already outlined. And then I have a whole bunch to still do. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Because I want to record like a dozen videos over, those, over that 20 hour period of being in a hotel. And I think I can do it if I don't have a migraine and if the video is already outlined. <sighs> so... We shall see. Tomorrow, assuming I feel okay, I will go to my storage room and get out all my camera equipment, including my lighting stuff, which I think I know what it all is. And I think it's not buried too far deep. I think it's in the front section. And then I'll, you know, go over to my hotel room and maybe I'll see if I can check in. Check in time is officially 3 p.m. I'm going to see if I can check in around 2, give myself a little more time charge at all my devices and batteries all the way up. I'd also like to film one video for my Elizabeth on video channel, but we'll see. That's not like vital. And I also have to charge my camera batteries, which I don't like they tend to lose charge over time and I haven't used them in um, two months. So they might have lost charge. I might have to do that for a little bit before I can actually film anything. If I end up having to outline some videos tomorrow during the morning, or tomorrow afternoon. That's obviously not the end of the world. But I should be able to get some done. All right, I'm gonna go. I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Later. Another minor problem I'm having is with my EcoFlow River 2, where the percent charge has nothing to do with how much power it has. I actually think what it is, is that when I use it to charge something that's trickle charges, like a USB thing, it does not accurately reflect how much has been used and so because it's just taking out really tiny amounts and so then it doesn't actually lower the percentage by how much has been used and then i go in to plug in my cpap and it says it's at 97 percent and my cpap dies at four o'clock in the morning when it's at 60 something percent so obviously it wasn't right obviously it was at way lower so i don't know exactly what it my calculating just based upon the amount of power used, my CPAP, which is a travel CPAP that uses a very tiny amount of power, it should take many days, like at least three, if not four or five days, depending on how many hours I use each night, to drain this. And But it's like this unpredictable thing. Now, what I decided today was number one, I'm actually going to stop using this to charge my fans or my phone or anything like that. It's just going to be for my CPAP. That's the only thing this battery is going to be for. Second, and, and what I did was I actually have this 
is actually plugged in my big battery, which is behind my seat here. And my fan is plugged in my big battery behind my seat. And, and I contacted customer support for EcoFlow and they told me to update the firmware. Problem is to update the firmware, you have to be on Wi-Fi and you have to be plugged in. So I have to do it let, and it has to, it, it can't use, it can only use like a certain frequency of Wi-Fi, which my significant other's house I can't use. So I have to go to the library, plug this in and use the library Wi-Fi, which I am not really wanting to use library Wi-Fi to update anything because they won't have a VPN if I'm using it to update something. But what am I going to do? You know, there's no other option here. So we have to do that. Hopefully no one is going to be introducing something bad into my battery since I will have to be using public Wi-Fi to update it. So yeah, that, and that's really my resolution is that this is going to be just for the CPAP. I'm going to do a video in the future on my whole CPAP setup for sleep apnea. And I actually think it, it works really well when I don't try to use this battery for other things. And I just use this battery only for my travel CPAP. So anyway, I am not super happy that EcoFlow's customer service was just like update the firmware, but I don't know. I, I'm not surprised. That's typically the way I haven't done it is because it's actually incredibly inconvenient for me to update firmware. I also am super annoyed when com companies ship products and then right after you open the box and have to start using it, you have to update the firmware because I'm just like, why wasn't it updated before? Presumably it was made a long time ago and stuck in a box for months and months and months, but I still dislike, dislike. All right, I'm going to go and try to get a few more things done as I still feel okay before the migraine comes back and it's going. I'm sitting in my car in the parking lot in another part, yeah, another parking lot. <laughs> and it is nearing the fourth day of my, like the end of the fourth day of this migraine. And I am feeling better from the perspective of p head pain and stuff. But I still have this issue of like not having my brain work correctly. And so I was able to do some of the outlines for my videos that I'm shooting tomorrow and the next day. Now, I haven't finished that. I'm hoping that in the morning or during the day tomorrow, I will have more capacity and my brain will work better and I'll be able to finish the rest of those. I still haven't been able to get my battery fixed because I can't update the firmware because it keeps timing out. So it, it needs to have a very solid connection to be able to update the firmware. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. I'm also hoping that tomorrow I'm going to be able to get back on my normal routines, including just, I mean, all the normal things, <laughs> making vitamins, doing my finances, like all these things. Everything is a fairly big mess. This looks like a big mess back there, but it's actually just because there's a couple of things that are on top that aren't put away how they need to be. So tomorrow and the next day, it's going to be a hotel, a one night in a hotel. So kind of two half days, I guess you could say. And hopefully a lot of filming from my other channel. I'll edit out the video later. So we'll see how that goes. Wish me luck that I will be very productive for my other YouTube business, which is the one that actually pays my bills right now. This one isn't monetized at the time I'm recording it, at least. It's actually doing really well. A number of videos have really taken off, making a lot of progress to being monetized. However, of course, being monetized with ads on a vlog travel-ish channel usually is going to pay a very small amount of money. So there'll be other things that I'll be doing too. It'll take a while to get all that stuff ramped up. But right now, my legal YouTube channel is the one and the Patreon pays the bills. So I need to get on that to keep it afloat. I do actually have enough money in that account to run payroll for this month. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm like, ah, oh, yes, I made enough money. YouTube income is very, fluctuates a lot and Patreon income fluctuates a lot. I mean, business income fluctuates a lot. So there are times where I make a lot or a lot, a lot money, a lot less. Before COVID, I had many, many, many months of money in my bank account of my business bank account to run, to run payroll for myself and my employee that I had at the time. I was always ahead, but I am no longer ahead. I am just paycheck to paycheck as far as the business being able to run each paycheck, but better than not, better than not having it. All right, I'm going to go. Wish me luck. Bye-bye. You know, I'm actually excited to shoot video tomorrow. Like 
to go to a hotel room and stage it and just and just shoot video there's it is neat having another channel that's very different than this one so i very much enjoy making these vloggy whatever kinds of videos that are just kind of integrated into my life but my other channel is more intentional where i outline things and i sit down and i shoot video and shoot multiple videos at once in the sense of like literally right after another which is taking a break in between it there's something nice about that is like it is very fulfilling to go and record a whole bunch of video i have a whole bunch of video outlined already i did a good job of doing that to the extent that i was physically <laughs> capable of doing it today i have a few more videos that i haven't yet outlined we'll see if i can do them tomorrow outline them in the morning maybe before i can go to the hotel before i can check in or I'll outline them, you know, at the end of the day or something. We'll see how it goes. I want to get, I, I have 12 topics, I think, in my notebook, something like that. And so, you know, I'll record as many videos as I can. And I'm not sure how many videos I can record in a 24 hour period or a 20 hour period. You know, we'll see. We'll see how much I can get done. I want to see if one night in a hotel room is enough for me to record a whole bunch of content. And I can kind of integrate that into my life every so often, spending a night in a, ho in a hotel room and recording a whole bunch of video for my money-making uh, YouTube channel. So yeah, I am looking forward to that too. It's like almost like going to work, but in a good way. So it is funny to me, like people used to give me, people still give me feedback on my YouTube and various social media being like, you should get glasses with reflective, anti-reflective glare, whatever coating. My last glasses had that, and these have it too. Look at that. Look, look how much reflection there is. And it's not because there's something wrong with the thing. It's because I have incredibly thick glasses. Like, look how you can see that I'm negative 13, negative 9. Okay? There's, there's a, I'm paid for the thinnest glasses that you can get. My glasses are expensive because of that. And you can only do so much. When you have glass that is curved that much, there's only so much you can do as far as reflection goes. And contacts don't work for me. I used to have contacts, but they dry my out, eyes out way too much. I can only wear them for a few hours a day. And I mean, I used to be able to wear them all day long. And then over the years, less and less and less and less. And so if I had to take my contacts out at 4.30, 5 o'clock already, I don't really see what the point is of it. So I'm wearing glasses for half the time anyway. So anyway, if you ever have a problem with the reflection of my glasses, I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is.